Good morning. This is uh, Nicholas Detman. I'm the marketing communications manager for the West Bend Theater Company, as well as a member of its board of directors. So happy and excited that you get to join us here this morning. Uh, we have a very special introduction and announcement to make regarding uh, the 2020 production of uh, Charles Dickens's classic tale, A Christmas Carol. Uh, joining me is the man who is going to be tasked to leading the cast and crew for this year's show, Alan Jordan. Alan, first, congratulations on um, being named director. Um, can you kind of tell us uh, your excitement level to take on uh, A Christmas Carol as the, as the director? Well, I'm pretty darn excited. A little nervous, but uh, pretty excited. So why did you uh, want to take on this project? Well, Nick, I think I shared with you, and I think many people know that I've been associated with the Christmas Carol um, many different times. Um, I, I spent, I think, five different years uh, doing one role or the next in the theater, and then I actually got a chance to help behind the scenes with the Masonic Center in, Hart in West Bend, and I even got a chance to play guitar one time for background music. So it was, I've done a lot of roles and I'd like to see this tradition continue. And it's cool to be able to help others to uh, be on stage with this unique play. And what is it about this show uh, that you've always liked to make you want to do it as many times as you, have, as you have? Oh, this show has heart. This show has mystery and, and spirituality it's got god it's got it's got uh, redemption i just i just love this show it speaks to me on a very very core level of the roles that you've played which one have you um did you seem to enjoy the most uh <laughs> oh, i love being ghost of christmas present i just i had way too much fun doing that and uh <laughs> Uh, violated one of the major rules of stage, which was uh, breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> and, and how did that happen? What did you do? Well, you know, they gave me the ability to sprinkle uh, Christmas dust on people, and I, um, I, I chose to do that liberally. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had a certain someone that also took that to heart this year. Isaac uh, played that part this year, and... Uh, he definitely did not hold back throwing the um, Christmas dust on the crowd this year. So yeah, yes. um, I know, I've, and uh, I know I can speak for the board um, as well as Nancy. And we're so, so excited that you're taking on this project. Um, I know I got a chance to meet you a couple years ago when you and I did uh, Little Mermaid with the Hartford mm -hmm. Players, and uh, right. it was neat to get to know get to know you then and kind of see you work. Um, and then kind of gotten to know you over the years since then. So what's um, what has always drawn to you uh, about being on stage and being a performer? Well, it's a, it's certainly a different way of expressing yourself. And um, over the years, uh, you know, when you when you do a role uh, to really do it, you have to actually leave who you are behind and become that other person at least that's the way I believe it. I, I know there's a different line of thought on acting, but for me, the way I accomplished it was to become that other person. And that was one of the major things I've always liked about acting is has a chance to do that. But I also liked acting because as busy as I was with young children, I was fortunate enough many times to have my son Alex on stage with me, who you also met in Little Mermaid. Right. Yep. And Alex yeah. did Christmas Carol with me Oh gosh, he was in that many years. Uh, Spam a lot. He was with me on Bye Bye Birdie. Uh, a lot of different things that we had the chance as father and son to do together. And I'll tell you what, that's that is another thing that really appeals to me about Christmas Carol. Is it's not about individuals. It's about families. And over the years, I've not only experienced it myself, but I've seen other families, mother, son, daughter, father, come to work together and get the chance. To to have a unique bonding experience on stage. And it plays out very well because th that emotion's already there. It's not created, it's there. And they get the chance right. to be that on stage with each other. So you got a, uh, looking at your uh, resume here, you got a, a pretty nice um, um, background in theater, an award-winning theater background too. Um, just kind of 
let people know what are some of the roles that you've had a chance to play over the years as a as an actor? Well, I didn't list it on that resume, and I probably should have. Uh, you didn't ask me what my favorite role was yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, I, I did uh, Captain Von Trapp in Sound of Music, um, did uh, Lloyd in Guys on Ice, um, uh, Albert Peterson in Bye Bye Birdie, I had the chance uh, to be the villain a couple of times. Uh, one was uh, Jonathan and Arsenic and Old Lace, and uh, the the heavy, really not the villain, but the heavy um, uh, Reverend C. Shaw in uh, Footloose. So I've had a chance to to do a fair amount of roles, and I don't have a preference. A lot of those things I listed are actually musicals, but I don't really have a preference for musicals. I just have been blessed to be able to act and to sing. So dancing. <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was kind of the way I felt when they cast me for a Little Mermaid. It's like, you wait, I got to dance, right? <laughs> my sister was the dancer, not me. So, um, so I will then ask you, what was your favorite role? Well, uh, I was at, with the, I want to say it was the West Bend Theater Company who did it at the time. They might have been underneath a different name, but we had the chance to do um, Spam a lot, and that was a blast. So I was the Black Knight. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm still getting uh, memes shared with me years later about, you know, Black Knight memes. So that either meant that I, I needed to study my role harder or else people remembered me in that role and uh, and still think of me whenever they see the uh, the uh, different Black Knight memes. And those who are Spamalot fans and Monty Python fans uh, will know what I'm talking about on that. Absolutely. That's one I want to do someday, too. Um, fortunately, I jumped into the, the theater pool for many of the organizations had already done it. So um, so looking at uh, A Christmas Carol, um, mm -hmm. I guess what's kind of your vision uh, with it? Obviously, it's going to be the uh, first two weekends in December at the West Bend Masonic Lodge, uh, mm -hmm. as it is each and every year. I know it is a definitely a a tradition that a lot of people in West Bend and even Washington County look forward to each year. So uh, just kind of uh, what's kind of your vision uh, with it this year? Well, of course, a vision doesn't necessarily mean what will be the final production, because once you start putting the pieces together, the, the, the show takes on a life of its own and it gets shaped by each one of the actors. But that's actually part of the vision. I want the actors to help dictate what we see on stage. Uh, I love the mystery of the show and the redemption factors of it. Uh, I love the fact that it, it, it's meant to speak directly to uh, in the improvement of humankind um, and for us to, to raise ourselves above our current situation to see others. And my goal is to tell a great story and do it justice and to do it in a way that connects with the audience, because at the end of the day, it's about the audience and what they feel and how they connect with the actors on stage. But it's, it needs to be a rewarding experience for those actors, because the reward for them is literally the audience and how they react and how good they feel um, after each show and after the production and after the practices. So all that's very important to me. Sure, folks, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking with Alan Jordan. Uh, Alan has been selected to be the director uh, for the 2020 production of the West Bend Christmas or uh, West Bend Theater Company's Christmas Carol. Uh, again, the first two weekends in December of 2020. Um, I, Alan, I have to ask Alan from State Farm, what are you wearing, Alan from State Farm? Jackie. <laughs> No, nope, I'm wearing jeans because it would not be appropriate to ride a motorcycle and wear khakis. That yeah, that that'd be kind of interesting for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess some people we obviously don't have uh, ticket information. And obviously, that stuff will come out as we get closer. But um, do you have kind of an idea of a calendar when uh, people might be able to start um, thinking about auditions? I know we have that opportunity open right now as far as submitting virtual auditions, but. Um, What's kind of your timeline for um, audition possibilities and maybe when, when um, rehearsals might get going? That's a very good question. And I wish I had that number at hand. Um, 
I believe we're going to be looking at a September audition. Uh, but if that's important, and I hope it is for people, clearly just go on the uh, the website and keep an eye on the website. Uh, and the auditions will be posted on the website. Um, and as you had mentioned, there's opportunity right now to audition. You can go online and you can record an audition. There's, there's actually audition material, monologue material. And uh, we decided, uh, well, not we, uh, this was actually decided by the board and I totally support the opportunity for people to audition without necessarily having to expose themselves at this time to the potential of, of COVID. That's something that we're very much keen on. So we're gonna do everything we can to, to stay safe uh, and yet still be able to put on a good show. Sure, and like we mentioned, uh, you, people who have an interest in auditioning for the show have that opportunity. They can go to our website, uh, wbtheaterco.com. Um, you can get a chance, you can download all the uh, information that you need, the monologues, uh, including um, some of the music that you would need uh, to learn for the show. Um, because, uh, yeah, we're mid June already, and before we know it, we're going to be getting into the end of the summer, and by then we'll be getting ready for auditions. So the time will come up quick. So, uh, Alan, we do have a question that has been posed for you. So I will bring this up on the screen here for you to check out. So here we go. It's from Nancy, our, uh, our president. So, Alan, what was your very first role on stage? Wow. Uh, so I'm a lot older now, uh, but I seem to recall being the Griffin in Alice in Wonderland. I think I was fourth grade. And I remember the most embarrassing part about that was having to wear hosiery. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've had some interesting costumes. I know the uh, the armor that you had to wear for King Triton was certainly uh, a fun choice. <laughs> that was a challenge. That was a challenge. Uh, but yeah, that was that one. And then in high school, I did. Um, I was the uh, they they had a, a show called Get Smart, which was very popular in the '60s. Yeah. Uh, a spy versus spy spoof, a uh, James Bond spoof for people who are struggling with what that was. Um, I'm sure the reruns are still out there, but um, so they had a stage production of it. And uh, I was the professor who was the victim of, uh, of, of, the, of the bad organization. So developing some type of weapon that they were going to use to conquer the world. And, and uh, so I was in the first few scenes and then out. And then at the very end, I was back. We're going to put a little notice here again from Nancy, kind of reminding people about the audition opportunities for the West Bend Theater Company and uh, Christmas Carol specifically. But um, like we've talked about, you have a lot of, um, you have a good, strong background in, in community theater. Mm -hmm. um, what was it about, why has community theater always been important to you? I mean, what's, what does it offer to you that really makes you want to come back to it again and again? Well, it's uh, there's a lot of people that I respect over the years in community theater, and um, Al Wallace would be one of those that I respect uh, immensely. Uh, not the only one, but I, I do respect him a lot. And one of the things that he pointed out that's neat about theater is that when you you can, as a director, you can direct, 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 but guess what? Once opening night happens, it's no longer your play. You're done. It's what is put on by the actors from that point forward. And it's, it's a unique form of entertainment. You don't, you don't get that. And uh, I just really like that about theater is, is, it takes on a life its own and anybody who's been in play knows opening night is not like closing night. It changes, it morphs. It's like, oh gosh, that was something funny and I didn't know it. Oh, let's see how I can play with that tomorrow night. And gosh, that was not funny and I, I didn't realize it. God, maybe I can do that in a serious way and have that connect better with the audience. And that's what live theater does is it, it literally connects you with the audience. You have the chance to directly emotionally connect with an audience and get direct feedback as you're doing it. How cool is that? And we have the opportunity to do that at West Bend for the Christmas Carol. 
And, and so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. As do I, it's, you just, the way you get to challenge yourself creatively too, and I'm sure you can feel the same way that the, the challenges that they, and that lie with being community theater and then seeing how people react and feeling how people react is also a lot of fun uh, as well. So, um, Al, I can't think of any other questions I have for you. So I really uh, appreciate you taking a couple minutes out of your time, out of your uh, schedule. Uh, again, folks, uh, Alan Jordan is going to be the director for the 2020 production of A Christmas Carol. Uh, and that is the first two weekends in December of 2020. Um, oh, I do actually have one more question that just popped up to me. So, um, I mean, given everything that we've kind of gone through um, with social distancing, the COVID-19, I mean, just the idea of trying to get ready for a show, is that kind of, kind of add to the excitement a little bit and kind of add to that itch? It's like, you know, we want to get back on stage. We want to do something we love. So is this uh, a neat opportunity for people to kind of have something to look forward to? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, it's right now uh, talking to my theater friends and listening to the sentiment, they want to get on stage. We want to get on stage. We have people who are normal patrons. They want to be in theater. They want to watch this. Um, oh, I show any show, and so I, I actually feel an obligation to make a show that's worth watching for those people. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna get this. We're gonna do it the right way too. I mean, it's it's certainly uh, every day something new comes out about the current situation that we didn't know the day before, and we're paying attention to that and want to make sure that we do the appropriate things. Keep people safe. That's right. Put on a good show. That's right. I can't wait to turn the lights on on stage. So, Alan, thanks again for uh, joining us today. Again, uh, I can speak for the board. Um, I'm very excited that you are going to take on the challenge as the director of A Christmas Carol. Again, first two weekends in December at the West Bend Masonic Lodge. Ticket information, obviously, will come out. Uh, as we get closer. So, Alan, thanks again, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you come up with with Christmas Carol in 2020. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. Have a good rest of your day, Alan. Thank you. You too, Nick.